If you're looking to start a tax business, what are the things that you actually need to have? Do you need to have an office? Do you need to have supplies? Do you need to have snacks for your clients, folders? What do you actually need to have versus what is nice to have? Well, having been a tax professional for over 20 years, here are the five things that I think you absolutely need in order to start your tax business. Welcome to Tax Help for Tax Pros, where tax pros go to be in the know. My name's Jared. So here are the five things that I think you absolutely need to have in order to start a tax business. Everything else is really kind of a nice to have. The first thing that you're gonna to need to get is you're gonna to need to get your IRS identification numbers. And there's two numbers that you need to get. The first is what is known as a P10, and that's your prepared tax identification number. This is the thing that you actually put on the bottom of a tax return indicating that you are a paid preparer, okay? And anybody who is doing tax returns absolutely has to have a P10. Now, they're fairly easy to get. So what you do is you head on over to irs.gov and then in the upper right hand corner, you're going to click tax pros. Next screen, you're going to select P10 system. And then on the next screen, you're going to create an account. Now there is a fee for having a P10. And right now in 2023, this is $19.75. So for less than 20 bucks, you can go ahead and get your P10. Now the next number that you're going to need is your EFIN or your electronic filing identification number. This is the number that actually allows you to put into your software so that you can transmit returns electronically to the IRS. Now, one thing to note is that if you are a paid preparer and you do over 10 returns each tax season, the IRS requires you to file those returns electronically unless a client like opts out and says they don't want you to do it. So in our office, we file everything electronically. So you're going to go need an EFIN. Now you're going to head back over to irs.gov. Once again, tax pros at the top, you'll select e-file providers, and then you're gonna select the option for become an authorized e-file provider. Now, everything that you need to know about being an e-file provider is in publication 3112. So go over to irs.gov, download it and read it. So there's actually three steps that you need to take in order to become an e-file provider. The first is gonna access the application and that's done through your e-services account. And it's a completely free account from the IRS. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to submit your application. And then the last thing you're going to do is you're going to have to go what is known as a suitability check, which is nothing more than a background and criminal check. Okay. Now the thing to know about the EFIN process is that it is the longest step in the whole entire process. It can take up to 45 days for the IRS to process your application. So if you're finding this video like right now, I think it's what October, <laughs> um, then yeah, you kind of need to get on it. And even if you find this in like December or January, you can go ahead and apply then. Um, the IRS actually oftentimes processes the applications faster than 45 days, but you want to give yourself enough time just in case. So the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get tax training. So you're going to need to know how to actually prepare a tax return. Now, one of the ways that you can get training is, in my opinion, one of the best ways because it's absolutely free. You can sign up to be a part of the IRS's VITA program, and that stands for the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. And that's actually how I started my process. I started doing taxes because I went and volunteered for FIDA. During tax season, I would go to the South Shore Library here in the city of Chicago, and I would volunteer and I would do taxes. It got me used to working face to face with clients um, and individuals, learning about their situation, the different scenarios that they presented me. And prior to that, you're going to go through an IRS training where they're going to give you a workbook and you're going to have a facilitator. So like someone like me, Jared of 20 years later teaches Jared of 20 years ago who knew nothing about taxes how to actually prepare a tax return. And once you get finished with the course, you're going to be presented with a certificate that says you are now qualified to prepare taxes. Okay. One of the other ways that you can get training is to pay for a course. So the big chains, they often offer tax courses to teach people. H&R Block is one of the most well known where they have a tax course. You can pay for it. It's called the Income Tax School, I believe. And then when you get finished, you'll be qualified to prepare taxes. One of the courses that I'm familiar with is the one offered by Pronto Tax School. I use their training. They're based out of California because I am a California registered preparer and I have to do education for California in order to be able to register and keep myself up to date. So that's another option, but just go ahead and Google it and you'll find plenty of places that you can go ahead and get trained. So the third thing you're going to need is you're going to need software. So in order to prepare taxes, I recommend using software. Yes, you could use forms, but to be honest with you, Software cuts down on mathematical errors and just make sure that everything that you need to do is done. Many software providers, they'll have diagnostics and they'll tell you when a return can't be e-filed. So 
There's many options that are out there, but one of the things that I do say is make sure that you're using professional software, okay? So don't simply just go and get like a free version of some software, we won't name names, but make sure you're getting a prepare grade software. And the other thing is, is you don't have to get a full version of software. So we use Drake in my office, and Drake, when I first started, had what was known as a pay per return option. And what that meant was, is I got like 10 returns that I could prepare for the price of the software. Back then, I think it was like 200 bucks. It might be 300 now. And I could file 10 tax returns. And then after that, I had to pay like $39 in order to file each additional return over there. So if you're not really sure of the volume, how many returns you're going to prepare, then just get the pay per return option and you'll be able to get yourself in business. And then if you do really well, then you can just simply pay a little bit more. Now, some of the options that you can use are Drake, OLT, you can use Pro Series, CCH, Pro Connect, you can use ATX, you can use Tax Act Professional. So there's numerous different softwares. Just go out there and Google maybe like the uh, NATP um, survey or any of the other best softwares for tax preparers, and you'll get a list of things that you can use. So the fourth thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to figure out your client communication method. And this can be as simple as having an email, it can be a phone number, it can be a doc exchange system or a client portal system, but how are you going to communicate with your clients? Now, my one recommendation when it comes to email is make sure you get a professional email. And what I mean by that is, it's very easy for me to go and get an email that's just like jaredstaxservice at gmail.com. But professionally, when I see something or when you see something that says like at gmail.com, it kind of sends a message, okay? So what you want to do instead is get something like Jared at jaredstaxservice.com. Now it doesn't have to be very hard. What you do is you just simply go to a domain provider like a GoDaddy or a DreamHost or a Bluehost and you sign up for a domain. So whatever you want to name your tax business, you get that. Now you don't have to get a website just because you got a domain. We have plenty of domains that we own and there's no website. All you would do is you would go into the platform and activate an email account. And me personally, I have multiple emails in our company. I have one for Jared, I have one for clients, I have one for students, I have one for customer assistance, I have one for support. So that, and I have one for news, which, you know, if I get IRS newsletters or news wires, they go there. So that my main email address is not cluttered up. And I have clients so that all my client emails, they go to clients. So you simply go sign up, get your domain, turn on an email, and you are in business. Now, the fifth and most important thing that you're going to need is you're going to need your marketing, okay? And it doesn't have to break the bank. The first thing that I always recommend is just, hey, if you're starting a tax business, tell everybody that you know. Hey, guys, I'm going out. I'm starting a tax business this season. Hey, if you need help, assistance, or you know somebody, spread the word. That is just your classic number one way to get business, word of mouth, broadcasting what it is that you do. But here I'm going to give you 10 quick ways that you can go ahead and market your business this season if you are starting and they won't necessarily break the bank. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to claim your free online listings. So you can go out there and create a Google My Business page and you can go and get your Yelp page absolutely free, don't have to pay anything. And that way when people are searching for tax businesses in the area, you might be listed on a Yelp page or a Google My Business. The next thing you can do is you can post and respond to ads online. So I remember very vividly going to Craigslist and just searching for bookkeeping jobs and tax preparation jobs and anything that anybody needed. And if somebody is looking for a tax preparer, you might find a client that way. Use social media to tell everybody about your tax service. And I recommend maybe posting like some videos or you could even post like some pictures of maybe you doing a tax return, sitting at your desk, if you have an office, if you have a computer, if you actually interact with clients, post those things. People want to know what it's like to be a tax professional and they also want to know what's it like to work with you. So use social media. The next thing you can do is you can network with your friends and your colleagues. So when I left, I told all of my friends. I once I gave my resignation from corporate America because I worked in corporate for 13 years, I told them, hey, I'm going out, I'm going to be starting a tax business. And then anybody else that I knew who did tax, I would talk to them because these are ways that you can get recommendations and referrals and it's relatively inexpensive. The next easy marketing thing that you can do is you can offer a referral program. In our office, we offer a referral of $50 for anybody who sends us a client. Here's the catch though. 
we don't pay out the referral until like that client pays us. So like if you refer somebody and they don't pay us, you're not getting the fee. So always hold on to your referral fees until after you get paid. That way you're paying somebody for a paid return. So the next thing you can do is you can publish online content. So you can do blogs, blog articles. If you have a website, you can be on your blog or you can go and post guest articles on other people's blogs. You can do videos and you can also do live streams. The next thing you can do is you can publish a monthly newsletter. It doesn't have to be expensive or anything like that. We have a newsletter. We send it out every month during tax season and then outside of tax season, we send it every other month. And it takes us, it costs us about a dollar per actual copy in order to do it when we consider our printing, our postage and all of that. But a newsletter is very easy marketing for you to do with your clients. And as you build up your client base, you can even market your referral program and list that in there. Hey, send us a client this tax season, I'll give you 45 bucks. The next thing you can do is you can do email marketing. So as you begin to get clients or as you're going out and you're networking with individuals and you're getting email addresses, you can put them in your email system, such as like a MailChimp, we use Aweber. Um, but you can then send out electronic communication to your prospects and your clients, like your newsletter. And that's a way for you to build up a list of individuals who may potentially be your clients and keep regular communication and contact with them. And then the last thing that you can do is you can do partnerships. So you can partner with businesses that don't offer your services. So this includes people like bookkeepers, payroll providers, like accountants that don't do tax, but they offer payroll. You can partner with banks because sometimes they need to refer somebody to a tax preparer to get their mortgages applications submitted because they haven't done their taxes in multiple years or like real estate agents you know sometimes a person is trying to actually get a house and they need two three years worth of tax returns and they haven't filed those tax returns and if they have a referral guess who they're going to send them to you so there you have it the five things that i think that you absolutely need to have in order to start your tax business if you have questions about any of these things, feel free to drop a comment down. We answer all comments, all questions, and I'll be happy to help you out. Now, if you got some value from this video, then please consider giving it a thumbs up or you can consider buying me a coffee. The extra coins that we get go towards making future content and helping us do things like buy gear and props. Now, until we meet again in our next episode, this has been Jared with Tax Help for Tax Pros, where pros go to be in the know.